Welcome back to our Precision Ag in the Southeast course. With me again is my young friend, Dr. John Fulton, our Alpha Eminent Scholar, and not to pick on you too much, John. Precision Ag, you know, you don't remember all that stuff. You're not as old goat like I am, but I remember back before Roundup Ready Technology and back before Precision Planners and all this stuff, the first time I saw uh, a field planted, a field of corn emerging that had been planted with one of these new planters, I couldn't believe it. It was incredible, the precision. And looking at this picture about how straight we can make rows across long fields, I can't, I can't write, I have to have lined paper to write or to be. <laughs> Tell us about GPS-based guidance systems. Well, no doubt about it, when we talk about guidance systems, and, and we're talking today about GPS or GNS-based guidance systems, about essentially the ability of that machine to drive itself while the operator sits, sits in the cab. Um, it just has, has grown over the last 15 or 20 years. Um, we talk about guidance today as air conditioning in these cabs. I mean, all the machinery oh, yeah. today that's rolling off of the lines, even even some of these smaller utility tractors today are starting to have guidance as a standard piece um, integrated into the, the, into the machine. And so it's, uh, I don't want to say a necessity, but it's just, it's just, common today and, and a lot of folks it's just uh, it's used and, and um, there's no decisions I'm, I'm using it today so we're going to talk about guidance systems mark that's kind of our next thing uh, from a farmer's perspective it is probably the most tangible benefit to the farm when we think about precision ag it's probably the, the number one technology adopted in precision ag today if you got guidance you know you, you're really uh, there's some things that you can do with that and so going back we talk about this in the introduction on average and this is on average in Alabama based on uh, work we did about six seven years ago uh, with some students looking at what is our average savings or you can look at the re reduction of overlap it's about 10% that's that's a pretty big deal today mark mm -hmm. when we think about not only the cost of inputs we think about just time in a field. I mean, we have a short window to get done, and if I can save 10%, you know, that's a that's a big deal. So that's what we're going to focus on is is this guidance technology. When we think about just some basics, we're minimizing overlaps. We're getting that overlap down to a very small area. Uh, most of the research would tell you, on average, we were about 10%, and we can get that down to 1% or 2% or less, per se, in most cases. And we can consistently do that. If you think back in our days when we were small kids, Mark, working on the tractors, you know, 12, 15 hours out cultivating, and mm -hmm. I can tell you I made a few mistakes myself. But, you know, this is, it gives you the ability to be accurate over time and go down the uh, same path time and time again. And so when we start looking at inputs, just the idea of getting our inputs out there where we want them and accurately and feeling confident about that, that's what guidance is really starting to afford all of our farmers here in Alabama and in the U.S. John, you remember coffee shop talk when you got tired and you was planting those last rows and they're doing, <laughs> gee, you had to look at it uh, for a year. People, people rag you about that for a long time and now you get tired, it's, it's easier. It's an easier job. Absolutely. And safer. And now we talk about who has the straightest rows. And uh, it's, a, it's a, uh, a technology that'll quickly pay for itself. And, you know, most of the, most of the folks will tell you, you know, it's, it's, it's already paid for itself in the terms of that quality of life we mentioned earlier. We can do things, and this is from John Deere, work at night very accurately. We don't have to make guesstimates when we're coming up mm -hmm. the headland and returns. The technology the displays that, like behind us, it'll give you a heads up, hey, you're coming to headland, it's time to turn. Uh, most of these GPS guidance systems today, you do have to still turn the machine, but once you turn and get a line back up, you hit a button and it's, it's taking off and, and doing the work for you. But you can do things at night. You know, we talk a lot, a lot in the South about conservation tillage or no-till and, and trying to get biomass to generate some organic matter. You know, 
the ability to go out and, and plant that field accurately. And even if I had the row markers, you know how hard it'd be just to follow. Ooh, you, you know, and so, you know, when we talk about some of these uh, practices that we really want to promote in the South to improve our soil tilth, our soil organic matter, and, and really have an impact on yields, you, you don't have to worry about that today. Really, this this slide should say what do we use it for, and it's it's like everything today. Yes. You know, you talked about having the navigation in your car. You got navigation on your phone, and in all these machines, like I mentioned, if you're buying a new machine, it's it's pretty much standard um, on that machine. You might have to purchase the GPS receiver. You might have to upgrade uh, your display, but it's it's already there, and it's for the for the most part a fairly cheap investment to get that. Uh, um, working on on your particular machine so we're going to come back to this but I think the real two things is most of our guys in Alabama have gone from the light bar system to where really I'm driving the machine and it's just telling you where you should drive based on feedback off the screen to more of what we call the automated guidance and and so the automated guidance is the machine will drive itself without you having the input uh, continues to input uh, things uh, into the computer per se, but it drives itself. So those are the two different ones. We still see a lot of light bars used in spring and some of those type of field operations. Pretty cheap way to get guidance and help you out and make sure that you're not overlapping or you know where you have sprayed or applied uh, chicken litter here in Alabama, those type of things. It's, it's a great asset. So, um, so anyways, when we think about benefits, it's, it's all over the place. But anyways, the big thing I talk about guidance systems today is you're reducing your overlap and in most cases eliminating skips because how often, Mark, we go out and if we got rows, we can follow rows. But if you're out in a pasture or in a conventional tilt field and you're trying to get things done, you got to go fill up. Coming back to that same spot and questioning yourself, where was I? And you can't really see some of the... Mm. Uh, your ruts or your your um, tire tracks, guidance will bring you back to that. And so there's allows you to maintain straight or parallel passes uh, very accurately. I don't have to use flags today like I used to to mark plots or mark where I stopped and want to come back to that. The, uh, the operator, you know, we, we hear this oftentimes, you know, I'm planting, you know, my planters, you know, I've doubled my planter size in the last eight years from 12 to 24 or whatever. I can focus on making sure that planter's at peak performance all the time versus trying to focus on driving the tractor, pulling it. So it really allows them to focus on the money aspect of what's going on out there in the field. And then another the thing that, that's really unique and, and I, I really appreciate about our Alabama farmers is trying to innovative farm practices you know, strip cropping to trying different things out that say, what's going to work mm -hmm. best for me? It just, this is an enabling technology to do things so much easier than we ever thought about today. And, and you know, we use it on our research farms, as you know, Mark, and in some cases we don't even mark out plots anymore. I mean, you just, all that's internal to the displays like you see uh, surrounding here this morning. You can go out and pre-plan what you're going to do, whether that's your rates or trying to split up your plots, you go out and it's just so much easier today and I don't have to get out with manpower and, and, and figure all that out beforehand and mark it off with flags and stuff. There's just a lot of innovative things that you can use with this type of technology today. John, uh, early in my career, pre-precision ag, I'd get calls pretty regular as well, come out, what's wrong with my crop? And if it's streaking, There'd be a, you know, three rows or uh, there'd be a streak through the field and, and it was meant fertilizer application or crop protection that, that didn't get applied there. Absolutely. Or that got double applied and, and killed a couple of rows. What's wrong? Well, if it's streaking through the field, that's an application error and go from there. And that's, that's the nice thing about some of the screens here, uh, whether it's the Raven or the new John Deere or the Ag Leader, you know, it builds or paints that mm -hmm. coverage map for you on the screen and you know exactly where you've already been in the field. And so you're not going back and, oh, I better go back and double check. Or as you say, uh, we just skip in a part of the field and all of a sudden you got some weed pressure that you didn't expect mm -hmm. and you're having to deal with. And it just, those, that guesswork is, is really over when we talk about guidance systems. So. Now, you young guys don't even remember a cockleburr. <laughs> 
But boy, you'd see a streak of cockleburrs through the field, and if you missed your crop protection, you didn't have soybeans or cotton, you had cockleburrs. Yeah. It was just solid. And and this this is really helpful, and we need to, to keep moving in that direction. So, so we're talking, you know, how do these things work? And we'll just go through very simply how, how these guidance systems work. We call it, you basically have to do a little bit of setup, okay, within the display. And one of the things that you have to say is what's going to be your swath width. So if I'm out planting, that might be, you know, um, 20 foot, 30 foot, 40 foot, whatever size your planter is. If you're doing fertilizer, that might be 50 60, 70, 80 foot, you, you enter that in, what's your pass to pass uh, or swath width. Um, and it's in, essentially all these, we've really condensed down to there's kind of two options. You either set an A, B point, as they call it, or an A, B line, which you need two points, a start and an end, okay? Or the other nice thing is, is if you want to run at a particular angle, so as an example, if I've planted a field and all of a sudden I need to do some tillage due to compaction, I want to run at a 45 or 30 degree angle, I can use the azimuth. So I can set an A point and I can set an angle. So a lot of cases, as an example, like down at the research farm, we want to be parallel with the field boundary. A lot of times that's a road or some, some attribute out there. We'll set and go out and know what that angle that road's running or uh, driveway and we set that azimuth to be perpendicular or parallel or perpendicular for doing the ends to that and so uh, a start point and an angle if you got two machines running in the field you get them both running at the same angle and let them meet up in the middle Man, that's impressive so those are just kind of two two methods the a uh, b line and then a point by azimuth, which is popular with some folks because they want to run at a particular angle, defined angle, out in the field. So there's also, this is just courtesy of Trimble, there's a lot of different patterns that you can uh, select. You can do headlands, you can do, you know, if you've got an obstacle, you can run around, you know, drive around that obstacle and in the bottom left you'll notice every subsequent will take in a, in, a, in account that obstacle. Spraying operation would be an example. Mm -hmm. I might not do that in planting because I want my rows to be straighter for when I come back with my harvester to be straight. I've got pivots, so either uh, a pivot selection in a lot of these they'll call it, or a spiral, and that can be done in a couple of different ways. You can just spiral in or out, or you can just maintain a, a specified width and just pick up, turn around, and keep going in a circle. So a lot of opportunities to use different uh, field patterns within these uh, guidance systems. It really depends on your operation, your field conditions, and what's present out there, but really gives you the capacity to do a lot of different things uh, and really look at the efficiency. And that's what we always encourage people. All of a sudden, by that azimuth function, I can look at, well, I've always planted this field based on this, and some of these new uh, ag GIS systems can optimize what that a B line is and bring it to the field and all of a sudden I can improve my efficiency 10, 15, 17, 18 percent that we found. 18 percent savings in your diesel fuel bill? Time. Again, Time. coming back back and, and looking at acres per hour. I mean those are the kinds of things that are going to help you be timely at the front end of the season, during the season, and ultimately set up and make sure your harvest is as efficient as possible hopefully. So anyways, guidance systems really on the front end, we really encourage people to think about each field individually. Every field presents a little bit different scenario where you enter the field, what it's shaped like, and figuring out what kind of, kind of pattern will work best. And there is a lot of times a way to optimize that out there. We'll go through this, Mark. There's just basically, we're going to break guidance systems into three primary categories. Light bar, okay, again, the operator's still driving, it's kind of like your navigation in your vehicle. Your driving is just giving you the line or where, you, where you're trying to go. Uh, assisted steering, which is basically kind of the automated guidance type level, but a little bit cheaper to get involved with. And then the full auto guidance, which is really where most of our guys are headed and most machinery manufacturers are really, it's all integrated in, it's 
electronics over hydraulics in terms of steering. It's really smooth. Uh, typically one or two is something I'll probably purchase aftermarket or after I purchase the machine most likely, but you can still work with your machinery uh, manufacturer if you just want the light bar and assisted steering too. So light bars, these are just uh, some examples, uh, pictures. Uh, again, about every manufacturer has, and these are fairly cheap starting. Oh, I think the cheapest one out there that we've seen recently is about $1,400, and you can spend uh, about up to $3,000. That would cover a majority of the what we call light bars. These are turnkey systems. It's a display. There's a power cord, typically, uh, and a remote antenna or GPS receiver you stick out on, t uh, on the top of the cab of the machine. Um, they're simple. Usually three buttons, turn it on and three buttons, you got that AB line established and you're, and you're going. And so, uh, and it's very easy to move. So if you're really worried, maybe this isn't for me, but I can move it from my tractor to sprayer and back uh, very easily. Um, and you can collect field data with this. So coverage maps, where I've applied, what I've applied, you can enter, you have the capabilities to enter that information into, capture it and download it post after the field operation and use if you wanted to. So um, pretty robust today, okay. Assisted steering, these categories really, um, to keep it simple, is typically something that's gonna occur in the cab. I'm either replacing the steering wheel or something attaches to the steering wheel. And fairly much more cheaper type of uh, uh, solution. Um, a lot of guys find this, uh, you'll find them on swathers for forage production will be a quick way to get into the, the guidance system. But uh, we do see some folks uh, in Alabama, uh, farmers using them within their tractors. Um, John Deere, Trimble, Topcon, uh, all have their own solutions. Um, Raven, Today, Ag Leader, everyone has what we would call assisted steering. Again, it might be totally replacing your steering wheel uh, or something that attaches, but gives you the capacity. The it drives the machine, uh, but it's all done internally to the cab. The last thing is the pure auto steering technology or auto guidance, what, what I'll talk about. Again, this is already integrated into most of the tractors out there. It's, it's electronics over hydraulics on your steering actuation. There's some sensors involved to figure out the steering angle of the front uh, or wherever your steering occurs. Uh, typically it'd be on the front of the tractor, on the rear of a combine. You wanna know what angle that, that uh, those tires are at any moment. You have that as feedback. Um, you got a display in the cab. Normally it's gonna be a, a much nicer display, uh, GPS on the cab, but it's pur purely a uh, top of the line. You can use all any type of the corrections that we mentioned up to the RTK as, as we uh, covered in the GPS, GNS receiver portion. Uh, I'd say a high percentage of our farmers in Alabama today are now using what we would call this auto steering option. It's fully integrated into my combine, my cotton harvester, my um, tractor, uh, potentially sprayer as well. So all the machines have the capabilities, like I said, built into it. You add the display functionality to it, you add the GPS on, and you're fully uh, auto guidance today. So one of the things I think, uh, again, let's just reemphasize what we're talking about. There's two classes. You got your RTK yes. and you got the DGPS or non-RTK. Again, there's different expectations that non-GPS can drift. We talked about accuracy is going to drift, and if you're really... Uh, interested and in always going and accurately down that same road, you need that RTK. So just as a refresher, GPS transforms itself and is really the, 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 the key sensor for guidance systems here that there's RTK that's non-drift, centimeter level, repeatable accuracy, and the non-RTK uh, or DGPS where we're starting to use some different types of corrections that could drift on us a little bit when we're out there. So just keep that in mind from a steering perspective. Um, uh, on these guidance systems. One thing that we always encourage folks here in Alabama is this rolling terrain. We know that we don't have flat land here, mm -hmm. you know, and we can really get into some slopes in the southern part of the state. So how do we deal with this as the, as the vehicle pitches or rolls, okay? And so basically what we have is what we call train compensation. And so if we're on a, this is 
an example of rolling. If we, if we did have an uncorrected position, we would be actually off, but what the terrain compensation does is get that position corrected to the center of the machine. So something to think about, just put a little um, table together for everyone out here. This is just slightly dated, probably a year and a half old, so it might not be all up to date. But you'll notice not every manufacturer has the same thing and accounts for roll, pitch, and yaw, which would be your angle of essentially steering. And so there's typically a cost to this, but most everyone is starting to offer both roll, pitch, and yaw, but not, not on all these systems. So if you're in rolling terrain, you're buying a light bar, I would be asking what kind of terrain compensation modules uh, do you have or do you have any for this light bar because it's going to throw you off target or off your AB line of where you really want to be. Most of all the high-end auto guidance systems today, as an example, this Starfire 3000 already has the terrain compensation integrated into it as an example. But if I looked at the, the GPS receiver over here, that does not have terrain compensation integrated into it. So again, you're going to use that solution. You might have to buy uh, a second train compensation package to, to account for especially the roll and pitch of that machine. This is some examples you see on the, the Trimble stuff. You'll see kind of a, a cab mounted box that has the inertial sensors already into it. So again, looking at roll pitch and yaw in that case, it's mounted to in, in, uh, at the floor of the cab. If you look at the John Deere and like a Topcon solution, again, it's already integrated into the receiver. So when you buy the receiver, you're not only getting the capabilities of the GPS GNSS, it has the inertial or the train compensation already integrated in it. So that's a, just some, some examples. Sometimes you have to mount something on the cab of the floor or in the floor of the cab um, or some of them, these, these receivers already have it built into them. So a very, very important thing is we found out here in Alabama because of the terrain conditions that most of our farmers deal with. So the final thing and, and some final comments I'll make is if you're purchasing machines, today it's not so big, but if, if, you're, if you're out looking at used farm equipment and you're interested or have already into the guidance or precision egg, make sure you're buy, buying equipment that are labeled guidance ready. That has the, the steering valve already available. It makes putting some of this guidance system on the tractor a very uh, painless part of the install. But if it's non-guidance ready, most of the times you're gonna have to buy another three to $4,000 to buy a steering valve. Um, and you might have to buy a few other extra components that, that you hadn't thought about just to add on the true auto guidance type. If it's guidance ready, it'll always have some of the, potentially the, the steering angle sensor already on the tractor, plus the, the proper steering valve to make this stuff work. So guidance ready, whether you see Green Star ready or whatever on the side, make sure you ask if you're really wanting to transfer or make older equipment work that is just guidance ready. How, how do you see that, John? Is it, it Would it be in the owner's manual or on the side of the tractor or around the steering wheel somewhere? Where? How would you know that they're not just, if you ask, uh, I don't know if you've heard people will lie to you, <laughs> particularly when they want your money. How do, you, how do you know that this would be guidance ready? Most of them on the cab, typically on the, on the window, will have some kind of indication that it's, it's guidance ready. Each company uses a little bit different terminology. The safest thing to do, Mark, is get the VIN number off of the machine, call the dealer or, or the local dealer and say, can you give me the specs and make sure this is guidance Spec, ready? Yeah, okay. Does it have the valve? Does it have, uh, a lot of times you can look for the steering valve, but normally that's up underneath the cab. And if you're, you know, you're not quite sure, but you can look and make sure the right steering valve's there. And if there's a sensor on the on the kingpin or the on the front, uh, you know, you can see some of that pretty quick. But if you're not looking, you're not sure, get the VIN number, call, the, call your dealer, and get, get all the information you can and ask. Well, if you're looking at two different pieces of equipment and one was guidance ready and the other wasn't, I mean, just the cost to bring it up, you can afford 
to pay a good bit more money absolutely for a guidance ready tractor so we had we had that very instance last year someone bought a, a little bit older uh, tractor um, they thought it was guidance ready but they had to basically spend about another uh, over four thousand dollars and that that's just to get it to, to the point where it was quote guidance ready that doesn't include the GPS yes. and getting everything else installed to make that run so that's it can be a costly mistake if, if you're not watching out and that I think most of our guys here in Alabama are really starting to recognize the value of looking out for this guidance ready uh, on any of the machines. What what would be a year model that they went from being rare to being the norm? Well, that's a good question. I, I just kind of across the board, I would say somewhere in the two thousands or yeah, that's across the board. Every company is a little bit different, so I don't want to don't hold me exactly to that. But, but kind of two thousands, yeah. Look, because yeah. it could be or it might not. Yeah, and you'll get to some series where the the first. Uh, builds were not guidance ready and the, the latter builds were guidance ready. We've had a few issues or a couple situations that mm -hmm. where uh, you just can't say well this all this series is potentially guidance ready. That's just some some things to look out for. So so with that we'll go through some some just considerations so if you're out there and you're you're jumping in you know again do I want a light bar or do I want auto guidance? And so if I want auto guidance, I either can go with an assisted steering option where again, it kind of mm -hmm. mounts up in the cab on the steering or, or uh, in that proximity to, to drive the, or a fully auto integrated auto and, steering And if solution. you work a lot of rolling ground, you want the auto guide. Auto guide would be my recommendation because there's never, how many times have you heard guys that bought light bars and say, man, I thought I could drive pretty, pretty good but I just can't keep myself over and if you let the machine take and go to the full auto guidance mm -hmm. level it just really takes all that out of there. Keep emphasizing accuracy am I out spraying and wasps will do me mm -hmm. the trick or am I out planting and doing some things where I really need that centimeter level accuracy and I need to go full fully RTK. Where do I get that correction from because not all corrections potentially might be available in your area and then as we recommended in the GPS uh, module, we really recommend the GNSS. We want that guidance system to work 24-7, 365. When you're up against trees, which is common in here in Alabama, as you know, we want that system to be able to make that first pass around the field or those last couple passes when you're starting to finish up. Train compensation is a must. We really recommend it. Um, for any of the systems. You can buy the train compensation as a, an add-on to a lot of the light bars, but in most cases when we talk about the auto guidance, it's already integrated, but just check to make sure because not all systems come with train compensation. And so is it included or not, just be asking that uh, uh, right up front or you're just not gonna get the performance that you're expecting. Capabilities of beyond guidance. Uh, we talked to right up front, guidance day is, is um, is um, basically air conditioning mark but when I take this John Deere display right here you know it's just not a guidance mm -hmm. product today you know that might be where I start but it does rate control it can control my planner I could potentially buy a fertilizer applicator and run it through this particular display so when I think about capabilities don't think about just buying guidance today even on these light bars, uh, you take Trimble's like 750 light bar, it can do rate control, it can do automatic section control, or I can do, go to some of these higher end displays that the companies like this one from John Deere, uh, that's a 2630, this can do all the technologies in one. I can start with guidance and then I might have the capability to grow with the technology and add on things. And so that's something to really think about, application control, automatic section control, which we'll talk about in other modules. But all those are built in. It might cost me to unlock it, but we're not buying guidance today. We really want to get people over that hurdle that you're buying more than guidance. So think about where you might want to be in five years or even two years in some cases to add on capabilities. Is it upgradable? You know, I take any of the displays, whether it's this uh, Raven and Vizio Pro, this John Deere 2630, Again, going kind of like back to the GPS receiver, there's always upgrades, either a fix or something new that they've 
uh, improved on and, and making sure that, uh, that you can upgrade that, okay? And, and so uh, it has to be upgradable. And then finally, can I document, can I get those coverage maps, whether I want to use them today or not, but can I get that data from, and in most cases, all these guidance systems will give you coverage maps or as applied maps that you can, that you can record and archive for the future. Or if you're doing some work for someone, give it to them to tell them what you did. And probably the most important thing, Mark, and you can, we'll end on this, is who's going to, who are you going to call? And you know that local support and having a trusted source of well, that's a big help deal. really depends and uh, really influences your decision on what you're going to buy. So somebody in Dothan might need a different product than somebody in Athens than somebody in Montgomery. Absolutely. It's who's that trusted yep. source and who are you going to call and keep you running when something does occur, whether that's an issue or you got something happening that you got some downtime. So service is a, a critical aspect to these guidance systems and stuff. So with that, we've kind of gone through the full spectrum of guidance. We've got a um, lot of options here in Alabama, as you know, Mark. Uh, it's exciting what the capabilities of these can do today. Again, we're not just buying guidance today. We're buying a full suite of capabilities built into any of these type of displays. It's just upon us to take it and, and really maximize the benefit for my, my farm operation. John, I like that. Maximize the benefit. I mean, all this costs money, but it's going to save a lot of money. We talk about 18% fuel savings. We talk about seed and all input savings. This is critical. And uh, we hope that, uh, you know, we've helped you make some decisions. We, we hope we can train you with this. Uh, take your test if you if you're want a certificate. And we look forward to seeing you for our next module. Thank you.